Hi everyone, welcome back to another video and today we're going to look at follow through length. So that's the distance that after the tip has hit the white, how far does a player then follow through past the impact on the white ball? Now I did a couple of video analysis recently, so I looked at Neil Robertson and I looked at Jack Lazowski. So if you look at those videos, you'll see that those two players have got different follow through lengths. Jack Lazowski goes past the cue ball a lot more than Neil Robertson. We're going to explore in this video why that is and how important is it to get that bit of extra follow through after contact with the cue ball. Now in this first example here, I've got the white next to the blue here. I'm using the blue as a marker really so that when I deliver the cue through the cue ball like that, you can see how far my cue is going to have travelled forward and you'll be able to see my follow through length. The shot I'm going to play is to pop this red here, play a little stun shot holding for the black. Now let's have a look at the follow through length that I get on a shot like this. So I'm doing my feathers up, get ready for the shot, so watch my follow through. So we can see that my follow through has been quite long there, it's about three or four inches there of follow through. Now that's important because I'm trying to catch the cue ball at exactly the right speed. Now the reason that's important is because if, let's for example, let's say on that shot, I need to catch the cue ball at 10 miles an hour. Let's just use that figure to keep it nice and simple. If I was trying to hit the white at 10 miles an hour and then I stopped one centimetre after I've hit the cue ball, that would mean I would have to have been decelerating before my tip actually struck the cue ball. So for a human being to make sure that they're hitting that white at 10 miles an hour, right at the point when that cue tip hits the white, that's why we must go past the cue ball and actually push through, through further. That then makes sure that, yeah, the tip is travelling at 10 miles an hour, it makes impact with the white, that's going to take some of the energy out of the cue speed, start that deceleration, and your arm will naturally come to a stop and that will be the shot completed. So that's why it's important to have a look at that follow through length. So let's have a look at some other shots and explain why some players have a longer follow through length than others. Okay, so I'm going to play this shot again, and I'm going to play it in two different ways. Now, I'm somebody that drops the elbow, which means that when I do my delivery, after I've come to my chest, my elbow will start dropping. So this position here starts dropping down, and that, of course, increases follow-through because my cue is still moving forward. Players like Neil Robertson don't do that. They just deliver to the chest, and that's the shot completed without the elbow dropping. So I'm going to play two shots here. This time, I'm, I'm going to hit the first one, and I'm not going to drop my elbow. So let's have a look at this. So I'm down into the shot, now I'm not going to drop my elbow. Right, so we can see that that time, my follow through was much, much less because I just delivered to my chest and I didn't let my elbow drop at all. So that was the difference between those two shots. Let's set another one of those up. Let's put the white back. So let's do that again, no elbow drop. So I'm down into the shot, trying not to drop my elbow. And you can see that I've got a bit of follow through there, about two inches maybe past where the cue ball was. That's enough to obviously get a good strike on the white, but this is the reason why some players, you will find that they will have longer follow throughs by dropping the elbow. And I'm one of those players that drops my elbow. So you'll now see if I do my normal technique and I'll let my elbow drop, that time I had much more follow through because the elbow has dropped and that obviously increases my hand moving forward further and that's why you see some players that will actually have a follow through that looks a lot more than others. So now the question is then which one of those two ways of hitting the ball is better? Is it better that you don't drop the elbow or is it better that you do so that you get some extra follow through length? And in reality, it doesn't really matter that much. There's too much variability in terms of, if we look at the top players in the world. So people like Ronnie O'Sullivan drops the elbow, uh, Sean Murphy drops the elbow, Jack Lazowski drops the elbow. Then you consult with the players that don't. Neil Robertson doesn't drop the elbow, Judd Trump doesn't. So because you're, you're watching players that are all absolutely at the top of the game and they've got different ways of approaching it, what I'm always doing is working with what is a player tending to do naturally? If somebody likes to drop their elbow, then I'll work with, okay, this is a player that naturally seems to want to have a tendency towards this thing, and we'll mould their game around that. If somebody doesn't want to do it, they're not naturally dropping that elbow, well then, let's not bother dropping it, because we're just deliberately telling somebody that hasn't got that natural tendency to try and change the whole mechanics of the way they hit the ball. 
The one thing that you do have to be very, very careful about with dropping the elbow, and I'm always telling people about this when I'm working with players on the table, lots of players don't use a very long backswing, and it then means that they hit the ball purely by dropping the elbow. Now that is more difficult to do because you're then having to coordinate moving your cue down in a straight line as well as forward in a straight line because when you drop the elbow obviously the cue is moving down and you've got to try and keep that cue moving perfectly in a straight line. So it's always a good idea to make sure that you're looking at someone's action. When I drop my elbow, if I look at my action in slow motion, I'm hitting the cue ball when my elbow is still high. So I've hit the cue ball and then the elbow after the shot just relaxes, keeping all the tension out of my technique. That's why I like the idea of doing it for my technique. As I say, players like Judd Trump, Neil Robertson don't do it. So you just need to understand why you're doing it and understand the dangers of dropping the elbow if you use a very small back swing and then completely hit the shot with dropping your elbow. That can be difficult because you're then, as I say, coordinating the cue, moving down as well, and you've got to keep that perfectly straight. So neither one is necessarily better than the other. Work with what you're doing naturally, but now you hopefully understand why you're doing that follow through and that's the importance of striking through the ball making sure that tip is going at its fastest when we catch that white. Key shot here to demonstrate this principle is a shot like this on the green. So I've got a pot on the green, I'm pretty straight and I want to bring the white all the way back down the table and try and get onto this red that's below the black spot here. Now there's no way I could get my cue travelling at its absolute fastest and get the spin on the white if I was to stop one centimetre after I hit the white. So if this is the white ball my cue's got to be travelling and still accelerating right as it hits the white, which means that I'm going to have to have a bit of a follow through to make sure that I'm still accelerating at the point of impact with that white. If I was to stop just one centimetre after, after I've hit the white, that would mean I must have been decelerating in this section before I actually caught the white ball. So that's why it's so important here to have that follow through. So I'm going to play this shot. I'm going to try and screw back as far as I can down the table here. I'm going to make a little mark on the screen so you can see my follow through length. So I'm going to have to move out the way of this shot a little bit because the cue ball is going to come back at me. But So I'll push through. So you see there, try to push through, get all the spin on the white. So I've really had to get through the white nicely to generate that spin. But you can see there that players actually sometimes they've got this, this opposite feeling in their mind that they're somehow, when they're generating a screw, they need to hit the white and then pull the cue back again because that helps generate the spin. It's completely opposite of that. You've got to be getting the cue traveling at its absolute fastest, pushing the bottom of the white, getting all the spin on. That's what generates that lovely reaction and that lovely screw shot. As always, if you did enjoy this video, remember to give it a like. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I do regular tutorial videos like this, recreating exhibition shots, all kind of fun stuff on the channel. So please consider subscribing, that just really helps me to keep all this content coming. If anyone's interested in any personal one-to-one -one coaching sessions, I'm working on this very table that you see here, helping players to improve their game all the time. So in the description box below, you'll see my contact details there, link to my website, my email address, contact me on WhatsApp. I'd love to help you improve your game personally. So as always, thanks a lot for watching everybody. Cheers.